know when you get together with a friend for coffee and the conversation quickly takes a turn toward the intricacies of Vancouver City Council? Yeah, don't kid yourself, that never happens. But when we sat down with Councilman Jack Berkman at City Hall, he made city government sound really interesting. You know, my challenge is, how do you communicate this stuff out? It's complex, it's not sexy, it's really hard to wrap a good package around it. You don't usually want to know it until it whacks you like, what do you mean I have to pay that tax? <laughs> a Vancouver City government um, structure is one of the most misunderstood items I run across when I talk with people. Simply stated, there's three different types of government you run across. One, a lot of people hear about where the mayor runs the city and there's a city council. And the city council passes laws and the mayor can veto. Or if there's a tie, the mayor may split the tie. That's often called a strong mayor system. That's not us. There's another one, which is a commission form of government. If you think of Portland, which a lot of people here see, where you have a commissioner who is elected and they run a portion of the city. That's not our form of government either. Our form is a manager council form of government. So we have six members of council and a mayor, and we all have one vote. We go to meetings and we set policy by majority. But at the end of the day, when the vote is taken, you agree this is going to be our policy, and then we give that policy to the city manager. Our city is governed by a charter that was passed by the voters, and it gives us our power and our limitations. We, our charter says city council members and the mayor may not direct any city staff member, may not be involved in the hiring or the firing. Everything we do is through our one employee, the city manager, and we do that by speaking as a whole body with policy. Whoa, okay. So if the city council votes on policy and the city manager implements it, what does the mayor do? Our mayor is a council member. Nothing else in terms of power. The mayor is there for ceremonial, does not have ha, does not have any other vote, votes just like everybody else on council. It's an important position because they do speak for the city. They carry forth that uh, policy that we set. Okay, so the mayor represents the city and also sets the agenda for council meetings. The council is comprised of diverse members each one bringing their own unique political background and life experiences to the table. Some members have full-time jobs and others are retired. Okay, so let's say I want to be a council member. What kind of salary are we talking? 60,000 in a corner office? We are paid for the position. Council members are paid about $21,000 per year. The mayor is about $26,000. We really don't get paid for expenses, uh, gas, and then that kind of thing. There's a mayor's office there. There's no council office. There's a conference room that we share. We come here for the meetings. Our work is done in the community, at coffee shops, at businesses, at people's houses. Boy, I have a lot of stuff in my car. <laughs> All right, now let's talk power. What can the city council actually do for me? That the city of Vancouver is really three businesses in one. One business is we're a water sewer utility. The second one is we're providing services to our community. Police, fire, transportation, parks. Uh, that's what we call our general street and fire fund. And then the third one is we'll get grant money. We, we act as a pass through. We get a federal grant to do something when you manage the money as it goes through. So that means city council has no power in federal, state, or county issues, nor can they control social services, justice, or the sands of time. So what about passing laws? How does that go down? Our voters said that when you pass laws, we want to know clearly what you're going to pass, and we want to be told about it well in advance. So when we're going to change a law or come up with a new law, we do a first reading and say, here's the document. This is what it's going to be. And then we advertise it. And a week later, we say, now we're going to have the public hearing come forth and tell us what's going on. So what I understand is that the council members will listen to public input. During the public hearing period, if a valuable new idea arises, councilmen could choose to send the policy all the way back to square one. Whole idea is that it slows down government, which frustrates some people, but it stops us from surprising people by saying, oh, I got a great idea, let's do it, pass it, boom, we're done. Okay, I got it. 
So the citizens of Vancouver created a charter that the city council is governed by. After the city council hears public comments, they take a vote. Upon reaching a majority, they pass the policy on to the city manager to implement. So Jack, what's your vision for the future? I'd like my grandkids to live here. What do they live in? The same kind of natural environment, the same kind of city with parks, a tax structure that's very reasonable, nothing's free, but paying a fair price for the services. They can get good jobs, great education system, and they want to raise their kids here. What question do you have? Is it, uh, is it illegal to not pay sales tax when you go out work? <laughs> Thank you! Okay, common question. Do I have to pay the sales tax if I go to Oregon? And the short answer is yes. You are supposed to complete a form when you come across the bridge and voluntarily pay your tax on whatever you buy over there. Uh, that doesn't happen. <laughs>